Uh, it's been quite a long time, hasn't it been, guys? Um, well, first things first is the shadow, well, that scrapped already a long time ago. And um, after I, I scrapped the shadow, me and my dad were considering replacing it with something. And we did get a replacement for the shadow. Uh, that I'm going to reveal soon enough. Anyway, the other thing was I scrapped my DRZ as well. So, RP on a DRZ isn't going to happen anymore until maybe many, many years down the road if I happen to move to Japan or the US and there are more DRZs there to buy. But, yeah, it's gone. So, at first I was talking about uh, replacing that with a scooter because of my... Uh, the accident that broke my left foot. So that's two things. Uh, speaking of my left foot, it's not really recovered yet. Yes, I can walk, but not very well. I'm limping all over the place. It's going to take a couple years. Uh, case is coming along pretty nicely. I'm not sure how much I'm going to get out of the insurance payout. Hopefully it's a six-figure sum. Uh, so that uh, I can actually use that money for the house that is coming up uh, in maybe about two years time. So without further ado, uh, seeing that today is a very very beautiful day, I am going to show you what I got to replace both the Shadow and the DRZ. Drumroll please! I gotta get out of this. Okay. Uh, okay. One, two. So, here is my new baby. It's a Kawasaki versus X300. Now, a lot of people are gonna be questioning why I bought this bike because they're gonna ask me. Isn't the reason you scrapped your DRZ or tried to sell it in the first place because you couldn't get on a on a tall bike anymore due to your injured leg? Yes, that is true. I I, I got rid of the DRZ because it was very difficult to get on uh, every morning uh, with the bad leg. So people are going to ask me why am I getting something uh, just as tall? The other thing is, actually, it's not as tall as my DRZ because, remember, my DRZ is a actual dual sport bike with super motard rims, just that my motard rims has dual sport tires on it, which makes it about 2 inches taller than the Versus X over here, which has a slightly lower suspension and a lower seat over there, as you can see. Now, the other thing is, this is 100% brand new. This is in 2017 colors, but it was manufactured in 2018. So I uh, I don't know if I want to call this a 2018 or a 2017 versus X. I mean, it doesn't matter because 2017 and the 2018, they are essentially the same bike. It's just different colors. Uh, 2017 was green. 2018, they offered it in black. And of course, the 2017, they came uh, with those two uh, panniers stock. And by right, I was supposed to get, uh, what do you call it, those, those uh, hand guards on this. But apparently, the goddamn dealer uh, didn't include them for free. By right, if you bought this anywhere else in the world, those hand guards came stock with the Versus X300. Now, in Malaysia, they have something different uh, from the rest of the world. They call it, it's a 250cc engine versus X250. It's just like how, you know, over here... Actually, over here, we don't... I don't think we have a Ninja 300. But in, in Malaysia, they have the Ninja... The, the new Ninja 250. Uh, because their licensing structure is totally different from ours. Theirs is based on a 250... 500 open... Whereas ours is a 200, 400 open. So uh, our licensing structure fits more in line with 
pretty much most of the world, whereas uh, the Malaysian ones, they, they'll take the 250 instead. So, anyway. So, as I was saying, this is totally brand new. How much did I pay for it? Uh, 20 grand. Uh, like I, I said before in a previous video, I wanted to get a scooter to replace the DRZ so that I didn't have to stress my left foot. Uh, but number one, replacing the shadow with this cost a lot. This was 20 grand and I bought it brand new with my dad. Uh, I, I couldn't really justify spending even more money on another bike. So right now, I am just with two bikes and both of them are Kawasaki. So go Team Green, yo! So as I was going to say, um, it's not that tall uh, to replace my DRZ with. I can actually get, get on it quite easily. Uh, I'm just going to come around. So from here, it looks a lot less, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, less intimidating to get on. And uh, yes, when I was on my DRZ, right after I broke my leg and before I got rid of it, uh, it was hard to get on because it was tall. But right now, uh, getting on this is not a problem. The seat height is, is low enough. I'm 177 meter, uh, centimeters tall, so it's not a big deal. I mean, I can just lift my leg right over to this height to get over it. And um, that's how I've been, how I've been uh, getting on. Basically, putting one hand on... The handlebars, one hand on the box, lifting one leg over, pushing myself so that I don't have to, you know, uh, how most people would get on a bike would be they would put plant one foot on the left side and swing the right foot over the seat. But that kind of uh, motion produces a twisting motion in my ankle that hurts it. So getting on my bike in this way uh, nowadays is a lot better on my ankle and my foot, left foot, uh, which isn't really a choice I can make because getting on this bike anyway requires me to do that because of this stupid box that my dad insists on having because this bike is shared. Uh, he really likes having a goddamn box to put all his garbage and then there are two boxes here. So it, it's not like, not like I can uh, swing my leg over, I'd just be kicking like Muay Thai boxing like that. So that's my new baby, and I've been loving a lot uh, recently. And maybe I should bring you on a little ride, and then we'll talk about it. Let's go. All right, so I'm on the bike. Uh, I've turned the, the engine on. First thing you're gonna realize is how soft the engine is. I'm so used to the loud like brrrr of my DRZ that I've had for two years. It was the most amazing sound ever. And coming back to to something smaller and with a quieter pipe like, like this, it takes a bit of getting used to. I don't really like the sound. Uh, I wish I could get a pipe for this but it's not worth the effort for a bloody 300 I mean it's brand new yes but it's not not worth it I'd rather uh, use that money to you know pay off my housing loan when it comes uh, or otherwise just save it for a rainy day or, or another bike in future because I really really want to get a scooter so anyway let's go and We'll talk about it a bit as we go along. So the first thing I really, really like about having a brand new bike is uh, how smooth everything is. You know, the clutch is is light, uh, shifting is light. I it might just be be the bike. I, I don't know, but you know, my DRZ is an old bike. Uh, and even though it's only about 100 cc's more, the, the clutch pull and the shifter feels like at least twice as heavy as this. This you could literally do with clutch in with your pinky only. That's how light the clutch on this bike is. It's awesome. Also, new bike, 
Studying it is so easy. Like, I mean, yes, after I got my ZX6R, because it was fuel injected, studying it was a lot easier than my DRZ and my FZ16 when I got it. Uh, both of which were carbureted and it sucked so hard to start it in the morning because I had to fiddle with the carburetor. I had to fiddle with um, the choke. It's not fun and you had to spend a good five minutes just trying to get it started cold uh, and it just annoyed me to no end so now having a new bike this is like how how many bikes have I been on like one two three four five I think this might be my sixth bike and but this is the second brand new bike I've owned after the FZ16 and the engine is so so smooth and I like how much technology there is on this bike I mean come on ABS on the 300 get out of here how often do you find ABS on 300s I mean uh, maybe in Europe where they are mandatory but in Singapore ABS on 300s god that ABS used to be only a thing on top of the line bikes like 600s, 1000s and you know those uh, long range uh, touring bikes not to mention for 300 this is freaking light to steer on in fact I could say that it's even lighter than my DRZ if I were to take this off road it, it'll be a, <laughs> it'll be, it'll be a lot easier than riding on the DRZ even with the uh, the DRZ 400S DRZ 400S was a heavy son of a bitch that I wouldn't want to use for anything but flat dirt trails not that this is any different you really don't want to use it for anything but flat dirt roads but the extra weight savings just makes up for a lot of it The difference is uh, between this and and coming from a DRC is that because it's a twin, uh, parallel twin, the power band is a bit different. Now, whereas in, uh, on my DRC, if I was facing a hill, I could put it in second gear and then just power my way through uh, on on the low revs. The Versus X three hundred, on the other hand, just likes to rev a lot higher it's not something that you want to keep in the low rpms it wants to be in the mid range about six six seven thousand rpm where it performs best so on the heels this stupid thing really gives me a lot of problem because i have to throw it down into the first gear where second gear on the DRZ was like no big deal you can go up on the hill on the, on second gear but this you had to put it on first gear and then bringing up to 5k and power up the, the hill uh, which is kind of annoying because after that I'll have to shift again once I am at the top whereas on my DRZ is like uh, I don't really have shift much maybe once I mean it's just that you know I wish I still had that goddamn uh, hand grips I am fucking pissed because I enjoy having hand grips around when I bring bikes into trails I end up hitting my hands on trees or le leaves and stuff like that and not having that means I have to pay more to buy my own set which kind of sucks anyway I really like this road old upper Thompson I mean I'm not really gonna go f go fast on this stretch of road because uh, if you know this place there's a lot of wild monkeys that will dash across the road right in front of you and I don't really want to be murdering any monkeys anytime soon anyway it's quite an end of it's the end of the road anyway so I will be seeing you guys more in future on this bike maybe I'll have uh, more things to talk about oh wait give me a second I need to pull over before I moved off I forgot to put 
on to strap on my helmet uh, so anyway um, as I said guys uh, hope you like this video uh, I really hope to see more uh, Kawasaki riders in Singapore because I really love Kawasaki that's why I have two Kawasaki bikes and nothing else a big team green supporter if you like adventure bikes um, and are planning to get a class 2A adventure bike maybe you could consider the Versus X300 instead of the CB400X which I kind of find boring compared to you know this this is such a fun bike to ride it's a way better the bike than the CB400X trust me Honda makes good bikes and they are really popular in Singapore but I have no idea why because it's just the support the part support that's far superior in in Singapore but if you ask me personally when it comes to the actual design of the bikes uh, Kawasaki and Yamaha are way better uh, designers in my opinion at the very least they aren't afraid to try new things which is uh, what really defines Honda they really really like to play it safe So maybe in the future, I could um, be talking to you more from this Kawasaki Versus X300. And I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a like if you like. Oh, oh, oh I hope he didn't see my visor. It's yellow. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, talk to you next time. Bye-bye.